Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Lisa and for today's video, I have such an exciting video because it is all about jewelry for beginners. So this video is dedicated to you if you are just starting your jewelry collection or even if you already have a jewelry collection, if you are here to see my essential picks, especially from Majuri. I know I post a ton of Majuri videos. If you guys have not seen them, I already have the first and second Majuri must-haves up and every single month I review a few Majuri products. So you can check those out as well. Before we go into this video, I do want to mention that I do have 10% off Majuri off of everything. You can buy anything with the link below. The discount will be automatically applied upon checkout so you can buy it for any of the products that I mentioned today and any products that you're interested in as well. So without any further ado, let's get this video started. I always get asked, Lisa, what would you pick if you can only pick one product in these categories or what are your must-haves? I realized I wanted to make this video because when I first started off with jewelry, I used to buy jewelry from mass retailers such as H&M, Forever 21, just not very good quality jewelry pieces that were only worth about $10, $15. I find that it wasn't really worth my money and in the end, I was actually spending a lot more for something that I didn't really truly love. I found myself either losing the products, even just kind of throwing it away because it would tarnish. Basically the quality would go down or because they were too trendy. So I threw it away. Another thing I realized was that when I first started off with jewelry, I didn't have a true understanding of what type of jewelry wearer I was. In today's video, I really, really want to help you, especially if you guys are new to the jewelry game or really are frustrated with your current pieces. I want to be able to help you kind of find your own style. Step one in kind of determining what kind of jewelry pieces to buy is number one, determine what kind of jewelry wearer you are. This is extremely important because number one, it will help you determine what kind of jewelry you're going to buy. And number two, you're going to actually determine what quality and price range you're going to buy. Why this is important is because you might look at a product and realize the price is really high, but then in the end, if you have a true understanding of who you are, it might help you justify the price that you're gonna pay for the product. So I'm gonna go into the two types of jewelry wearers that I personally think there are and how this is going to determine what type of products you should buy. So the first type of jewelry wearer is a low maintenance jewelry wearer. You are a low jewelry wearer if number one, you you don't really like having to take on and off your necklaces, just being able to do it once and not having to deal with it. And number two, you don't want to be too fussy on, you know, sleeping with your jewelry or showering with your jewelry, whatever it is, just you want to be very like low maintenance about it, not constantly taking it off and on. And the third type that might actually potentially make you a low maintenance jewelry wear is if your body actually has an allergic reaction to lower quality products. For example, I know a lot of my friends, they have to wear solid gold when it comes to earrings because it might actually irritate their skin. So if you are someone like that, you would actually end up in the lower maintenance jewelry group because basically if you are in this group of lower maintenance jewelry wearer, you would probably have to go for solid gold and spend a little bit more money because these are the products that allow you to live that lifestyle of never having to take things off. And also if you are allergic to the products, you also have to spend a little bit more money so that your body doesn't react poorly to sterling silver or other types of metals. For me personally, I am in this category. I am such a low maintenance jewelry person, especially because I always struggle with, you know, putting on and off my necklaces, my bracelets, and I live alone and I also have longer nails. So for me to constantly have to take it off and on, it just really, really frustrates me. Also, I always find that whenever I say, okay, tomorrow morning, I'm going to put on jewelry or whatever it is, I always end up not doing it. I just find that I've gone to work a couple of times when I would tell myself I'm gonna put on this necklace, but then once I get to work, I realize my neck is bare. 
I end up basically realizing that I am actually a lower maintenance jewelry gal. So I am more willing to spend the money and have higher quality pieces to be able to live that lazier lifestyle. The second category is the higher maintenance jewelry wearer. You're most likely in this category if number one, you actually want variety. Like let's just say if every single day you want to switch it up and you don't want to see the same pieces over and over again and you're just like, oh my God, I don't want to be always seen wearing the same necklace and you want a lot of variety. You like a lot of statement pieces, big pieces and stuff like that. And the other thing that would put you in this category is you actually don't mind being able to switch up your products and taking it on and off every night. The other thing is if it bothers you sleeping with the products at night and you have to take it off anyway, you are one of those people who don't like sleeping with either a necklace on or rings on or bracelets on and you're just very uncomfortable and want to have a good night's sleep and you don't like showering or having your products on when you're washing your hands or when you're in the shower. So if you actually fit into that type of jewelry wearer, you would be a higher maintenance jewelry wearer. This might actually be a good thing because how naturally you would live your lifestyle. You would actually be able to buy a lower price point product. For example, going towards gold of Hermes instead of having to go for solid gold. So like I said, personally, I'm more of a solid gold wearer because I don't mind sleeping with the products at night and I also just don't like taking off the product and it's a huge hassle for me. So I end up liking to having to switch up my products a lot less and also being able to not have to change them that often. So after you determine what type of jewelry wear you are, lower maintenance, you probably have to go for solid gold and a higher price point. Higher maintenance, you can kind of go for your gold vermeil and a lower price point. But either way, after you determine this, you can start with choosing the category of which pieces you think is gonna elevate you the most. So for example, for me personally, I feel so, so bare when I don't have a necklace around my neck. I feel like I'm always wearing tops such as this one that kind of looks like this. And I just want to have like a little pendant in the middle. I just feel so bare without one. I personally always need to have a necklace on. And the second thing is I'm actually a huge ring person, mostly because I like to work with my own insecurities. So my insecurity is I personally feel like I have shorter, stubbier hands. And I feel like I've said this a bunch of times throughout my channel. And the other thing, if you guys are new here, is I also have eczema in the back of my hand. So because of this, I really like to wear bracelets and rings just so it kind of like distracts you from what else is going on up here. Because of that, I like to, you know, buy the things that will distract you. For me, my priorities always a necklace and rings. But of course, for the sake of this video, I will go through everything with you. Basically, after you determine that, you can start and prioritize the categories that you want to buy first and kind of work your way down from there. I'm going to go for also the categories that are important to me first. And that's going to be the categories that I'm going to put in order for me personally. You guys are free to choose what you find appropriate. The second thing I want to say is that because this video is mostly for jewelry for beginners from the entire Majuri catalog, I literally narrow down my most essential best starter pieces. And also I really, really kept in mind the price range. I feel like if this is going to be your first time buying, you're going to start your collection. I definitely kept that in mind. So I picked pieces with, you know, kind of a lower price point in mind, or at least pieces that I really, really think are worth the price point. I narrowed down only about like one or two items from each category. And that was like the toughest thing I've ever had to do. I'm being so dramatic right now, but either way, as you guys can see, I love Majuri and I'm like decked out in Majuri. I feel like there's literally a store on my body. Anytime my friends see me, they're just like, oh my God, can we try out all these rings? I have like all the items. Like I said, I'm just only gonna narrow down the few pieces that I think are great for essential jewelry. The first category I'm gonna go through is gonna be with necklaces. And I'm first gonna start with the solid gold pieces. So the first piece that I actually chose is the engravable necklace and it looks like this. If you guys have followed me from a very, very long time, you guys will know that this necklace has been around my neck probably for two plus years until I recently switched it up for this initial necklace with the diamond. The reason why I chose this as an essential piece is because for the price point that it is, $330 Canadian with the pendant and the chain. With this price point, I was able to wear this 
every day without ever having to take it off. I also like that it was a circular pendant with my initial L on it because it works well with, for example, tops like this where you can have like a little pendant. But I actually found that it works really, really well as well with shirts that go all the way to the top of your neck and it really stands out on each of the clothing fabrics as well. So this one I think is super worth it. The only reason why I didn't recommend this one for a jewelry for beginners is just because of the price point. It is still a stunning necklace, but this one ends up being 465 if you buy the pendant and the chain, or you can just buy the pendant for, I believe, $265. Or what you can do is you can actually purchase this necklace and then buy just the pendant and kind of switch it when you want to switch it. But if you are buying it for the first time and you also need to buy the chain, it ends up working out to be a little bit above $400, which is why I think like as a starter piece, this one is amazing. This one was my starter piece and I wore it every day for over two years. Second necklace that I want to recommend in the solid gold category. If you guys are avid watchers of me, you will know that this one is coming, but this one is for the person who don't love pendants, but still want like a piece on your body at all times. So the one that I'm recommending is the one I have on here, which is the boyfriend chain necklace. And the reason why I love this is because honestly, I think this suits every single person. It is solid gold. You never have to take it off. The chain is so dainty and just so beautiful. And I just think that it really, really matches any person, no matter what types of top you're wearing. And the other lovely thing about this necklace is that you can actually adjust it however the length you want. You can wear it all the way as big as you want, which is what I have here. Or if you want it even tighter, like a choker, you can and adjust it within these hoops as well. That's on the solid gold. Moving on to the gold vermeil for necklaces. The first one in the pendant category that I have to recommend is definitely the Lotus necklace. So this is what the necklace looks like. If you guys watch my videos, you guys will know that I love this necklace so much that I'm basically begging Majuri to make a solid gold version so I don't have to take it off at night. This is such a great price point. This one is only $115. It is gold of Vermeer still. So that just means it is just solid gold coating. So with this one, you do have to take it off at night and before you shower, but this is such a great starter piece if you are already a high maintenance jewelry wearer. This one just looks absolutely gorgeous and I really want my jewelry to make a solid gold version of this necklace so bad. The next one in the gold Vermeer category, once again, this is shout out to people who are not pendant people. So this is actually the choker that I have. This is the layered spheres necklace. It has three chains on it, as you guys can see, and it has these little spheres that go across. And I just absolutely love this necklace because first of all, it makes you look like you have more than one necklace and it's also very minimal and very dainty. So it will still go with everything. If you are someone who is already gonna take off your necklace on and off at night, this is such a great alternative. And this one is priced at $85 Canadian. Okay, so moving on to rings. The first ring that I have in the solid gold category is the bold stacker. And this ring, I'm so bad at myself. I actually left it at my parents' house in Vancouver, but basically I wanted to add this as the first introduction solid gold ring because it actually is so simplistic. It just has one solid band. I feel like it's gonna be extremely easy for you to stack, for you to just start off your collection. And it also looks amazing on its own. And I feel like this ring is best for people who are planning to buy more rings later on. I will try to find a picture of me wearing it to show you guys, but basically this is such a great like intro piece and you can stack it on top of other rings, etc. If you are planning to build your collection, this is such a great starter piece. The second solid gold piece that I want to talk about is for someone potentially who doesn't really find themselves going to buy more rings, but they do still fit in the low maintenance jewelry wear. Personally, I really like the duo ring, which I got recently. And basically it's actually just two solid gold rings tied together. When you put it on, it has this really nice crossover on the ring. So it looks like an X and it also kind of looks like you're already doing the layering. If you don't plan on buying too many pieces later on, or you're not planning to expand your collection, I feel like this is such a great two in one and you're getting the solid gold and you never really have to take this one off. That one is definitely my second recommendation. My third recommendation is if you want something really, really, really dainty and you want to be able to stack it with anything, I would actually recommend the spheres ring. And this is the thinnest ring that I have. I put it on my thumb, but basically I actually think that this is one of those pieces that can go with literally 
literally any piece on my fingers. If I just put it against my fingers, this also really looks good. It's just not as basic as the bold stacker. So if you're more like a classic gal, I would still go for the bold stacker. If you are more of someone who's going to build your collection and like the texture and not as simple as a bold stacker, then I would go with the spheres ring. Okay, so moving on to the gold for May category, I have two rings for you. Fun fact, this is the first Majuri product I have ever received. Like this is what started this entire addiction. The first ever Majuri piece, not just like ring, but just first Majuri piece ever is the Boyfriend Stacker. And this one is at $85. And after owning it for three years, it still looks like it's in pretty good condition. I always have it on my index finger. It just looks absolutely amazing. Like I said, it has such a simplicity to it. I do have to take it on and off every single night, but based on how thick it is, I don't feel very comfortable having it on my fingers at all time. Anyway, this item is $85 and I feel like for how long I have had this product, it is so worth the money. If you are someone who wants a little bit more spice and something not as simple as the boyfriend stacker, then I would recommend the croissant ring in gold vermeil. So this piece is also $85 and this one just has a little bit more, I guess, like personality to it. And if you are a croissant lover like I am, I am literally addicted to all croissants. If you are a croissant lover then I would go for this one. I always get so many compliments when I wear my croissant ring. So that is another ring that I think is absolutely beautiful in the gold vermeil category. Okay so moving on to the next category I have earrings and for earrings in the solid gold category I actually have a couple because I realize that a lot of people have different numbers of piercings and etc. One theme that I want to say about the solid gold earrings that I've kind of decided is is that you're not gonna find me talking about studs. I do love studs, but for me in general, anything with the backing, I actually like to take it off just because I find that every single time I have a stud, if I leave it on for too long, even if it's solid gold, I just like leave it on for weeks on end, months on end, and I shower with it, sleep with it. After a little while, it starts hurting. And I realize it's because when I take it off, it kind of collects all the debris. It's just like really gross. I guess it's cause your ears don't necessarily have as much breathability when you have the stud covering, I guess, your ear lobe. Basically, the three recommendations that I have are pieces that I find that when I wear it for days, months, like whatever on end, it has that breathability. It's not that easily removed, perfect pieces to wear forever. So the first recommendation that I have are for people with multiple holes. This also works with people with just one ear hole. However, the reason why I don't recommend it as much is because sometimes Sometimes when I only put it through the one hole, it kind of does slip off. So you have to be very careful with it. But the product that I am talking about are the threaders. So this is what the threaders look like. And the reason why these are absolutely my favorite and I have more than one ear hole, I have two holes. I can actually thread from one hole to the other and it just kind of dangles from my first hole. And I've had so many DMs every time I wear these earrings on Instagram. What earrings? are you wearing? Can you link the earrings, etc.? I get so many compliments. You can obviously also wear it with just one hole and have it dangle and that looks so pretty alone. If you're going to wear it like this, then I would definitely recommend either taking it off at night or really pulling the threader all the way to the end so that it doesn't fall off at night. But if you have the one hole, I recommend doing that. But for two holes or more, I find that it's so cute and just like so intricate when you're able to kind of like loop through all of these holes. Okay. I need to stop saying holes because I don't know, is this inappropriate? Anyway. The next solid gold earring that I have for you are people with just the one hole. If you guys have watched my videos, you guys will already know these are my number one favorite earrings from Majuri, but these are the spiral earrings. And the reason why I like the spiral earrings is because if you just have the one hole, it makes it look like you have two. Even if you have your two holes, you can put it at the end and then make it look like you have three holes. These ones are so cute and you can kind of like loop them around and then it will give you the illusion that you have more than one earring. The reason why I have to recommend 
recommend another earring though is because for the spiral earrings, I've actually gotten feedback from some of my friends. If you have like a thicker earlobe, your hole is like very much in the middle of your earlobe, then these ones might not work for you as well because it might like be crammed at the bottom because there's not enough space. So if you find that you have like a longer earlobe, I wouldn't necessarily recommend these because my friends with longer earlobes are having issues kind of like threading it through or you're just gonna have to put it in the upper holes here so that it can still thread through your ears. For those people who have the longer earlobes, I do have another recommendation for you and these are the bold hoops. So these are one of the best selling hoops in Majuri and honestly for good reason. They're super comfortable. They're actually very, very comfortable to sleep in even though they're a hoop. They're still very, very tiny, tiny hoop earrings. It doesn't impact you and you don't have the fear of someone like tugging your hoop earring down. I don't know, every time I wear hoop earrings, sometimes I have that fear like someone was gonna tug it and then everything's gonna come crashing down. That's another pair of earrings that I have as a suggestion. As you can see from these three pieces, there are no backings. It's just basically one kind of like metal piece going through your hole and there's breathability on both ends. And I think that's so important. If you are gonna be someone like me who does not like to take off their earrings, you need the breathability or else you're gonna have that gross like pus coming out. Like, oh, I don't know. Every time I'm gonna wear studs, I have to take it off after a little while. Anyway, that being said, this is a great segue to the gold verme earrings. So the gold verme earrings that I'm gonna recommend, and once again, this also has to do with price point because as you guys can see from the side, the price point of the other earrings are a little bit higher. For my gold verme people and lower maintenance gals, my recommendation are the editor hoop earrings. These are one of the best selling, probably the best, selling Majuri products for Gold Verme when it comes to earrings. They look so classic and if you even go on the website you can see millions of people. Okay maybe not millions but a lot of girls styling these earrings. Even my best friend, if you guys didn't know, I have a podcast with my best friend. So my best friend, Teresa, she has these earrings and she absolutely loves them. Basically, these are for the gals that don't mind taking it on and off at night. These are probably the best looking hoop earrings you're ever gonna get your hands on. So definitely check these out as well. Okay, so we have two more categories left. I'm gonna start off with bracelets and I'm gonna move on to anklets. With bracelets, I actually do not have a gold verme option and that's because I feel like after looking at the price point of everything and also kind of the style of everything and how you have to put it on and off for me I just feel like with bracelets it doesn't seem that worth it to have to like take it on and off especially with the struggle and also the price point I actually just think that for both my low maintenance and high maintenance jewelry wearers I just think you need to get one product and one product only and if you are not new to my channel you already know what I'm gonna say Say, but it is gonna be the boyfriend bold chain bracelet. I actually have three bracelets from Majuri, but out of all my three, if I had to recommend one, I will still recommend the boyfriend bold chain. I just feel like based on the thickness as well, I just have less anxiety of it going anywhere and getting caught onto things. Like I feel like if my boyfriend chain bracelet got caught onto something and I accidentally tugged my arm, I feel like the chance of it breaking is a lot less than some of the other one. Not saying that the other ones will break. It's just that vision that it gives me. It is so dainty that I feel like I have to be really, 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 really careful with it. Also because I really like the style of the boyfriend chain, as you guys know. If I had to just pick one bracelet, I don't care who you are. If you're a low maintenance wearer, if you're a high maintenance wearer, like it doesn't matter. Everyone needs this bracelet and the necklace for that matter. But anyway, it is just my one and only recommendation. And I think it is super worth it because I have it on every single day and I never take it off. Actually, also so the other two bracelets I have but so when it comes to anklets I have two anklets on but once again if I have to pick one anklet you guys already know it is the boyfriend bold chain again like I said I think that when it comes to anklets once again same with the wrist for me it's about the design the price point and lastly also of course the durability and I just feel like for all of those categories the boyfriend bold chain just really knocks it out of the park every single time so if I had to recommend one anklet 
anklet. It would definitely be that one, but the other anklet that is available as well is amazing. Unfortunately, in the anklet department, there aren't any gold vermeil options, so you're free to look at any other store besides Majuri, of course, but this is the one that I personally really, really love. So yeah, that basically concludes my entire recommendation list from earrings, necklaces, rings, bracelets, and anklets. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you guys liked it, make sure you click the like button. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I post about twice a week on my channel, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye!